and welcome back. Joining us now is author Fritz Springmeier. He is the author of Bloodlines of the Illuminati. It's a book that we sell exclusively at the InfoWars store. And this particular book provides a wealth of material and insider information on the Illuminati and their bloodline based on eyewitness accounts. Fritz, welcome back. It's great to have you back on the show. So, well, thank you, Leanne. What do you think about what's going on in Ferguson, Missouri? America's really getting their first taste of the over-militarization of the police force and what that actually looks like. Boy, you, you said that very well. You know, the police there uh, are have more body armor and, and more weapons than what we had um, given our soldiers that went into Iraq back in 2003. And they're not as well trained. It's it's not a good idea to use the National Guard and militarized police in a situation like that. You're you're asking for problems. Traditionally, historically, there's always been problems when governments have uh, gone in and and done something like this. There's always excessive force. Right. Well, what I mean, that's just basic. If you have, if there's a occupied country, you're going to have resistance. And that's pretty much what we're seeing there on the streets of Ferguson. How would you compare this to previous protests? Oh, that's a good question. Um, you know, back in 99, the kind of the watershed protest was the World Trade uh, Organization protest in Seattle. And when that occurred, the Illuminati pulled all of their organizations together, the Business Roundtable, Trilateral Commission, Council for Foreign Relations. They got a PR organization, Black Kelly, uh, Healy and Scruggs, they, they, that's out of Washington, D.C. They got uh, the Center for European Policy Studies, the Euro Policy Center, which th those last two are based in Brussels. They got all of these organizations working. How can we stay on top or control these kind of situations? And, um, you know, we're, th this, this thing uh, can get out of hand because there are protests in the past that have gotten out of hand, like back in May of 68, the, for three days there, the 28th, 29th, and 30th. Um, there. Um, the French government couldn't deal with it. In fact, Parliament in France said, we're ready to create a new government because the government couldn't deal with the protest. So there have been monumental protests that have had an impact. But what we see happening here in Ferguson is something that the, the controllers are going to be able to manipulate and benefit from in, in contrast with the World Trade Organization protest, which got them alarmed and they had to, to sit down and brainstorm how to, how to deal with these things in the future because it got out of hand. This, this one here in Ferguson looks like it's setting up uh, end time scenarios for them to gain more control, to scare people, to take our guns away, just all the things that Alex is warning about. Right, and in 99, they weren't even having to deal with the effects of social media and how fast things can get exacerbated just by word of mouth getting passed around like on uh, sites like Twitter and things like that. Uh, and this situation in Ferguson really didn't even start on Twitter. It started there in the streets, and then as the media and more people kind of picked up on it, it really ramped up. Uh, but we've, we've reported on how the Pentagon is, of course, studying the tipping point in civil unrest. And I mean, do you think they were prepared for this or had any hand in it? Well, I think that in, in all of these cases, because of the extensive intelligence gathering that they have, they have been aware. I, I think even in the World Trade Organization 99 protest, they had um, an awareness that it was going to happen. They have people infiltrated into a number of these organizations that took part. Um, the question is, is do they, will they get out of hand or, or uh, in a way that they don't want? Now, of course, they want some chaos. They need that chaos to, to cut and bring in the order that they want. 
So, um, yeah, I think that they had, they definitely had uh, prior knowledge that this was going to happen. Um, and that was one of the things that I was talking to Alex about was is back in the 90s, working with people that were under the trauma-based mind control, finding out that they'd been programmed, whether it was police or, or criminals or whatnot, a, lo a wide range of people have been programmed to, to um, participate in these chaotic disturbances. Well, exactly. We've got an article up by Kurt Nimmo up at Infowars.com, uh, basically talking about how the FBI and the DHS has uh, been using provocateurs, and potentially we've got the new Black Panthers there, uh, kind of provocateuring and really ramping it up, and basically convincing these protesters that they're on their side, um, but really it's more to incite racial tension. Yeah, exactly. So, yeah, you guys have been doing a good job of, of covering it and um, giving people the bigger picture. Well, switching gears now, we, we just sort of had an untimely suicide, uh, Robin Williams, actor Robin Williams. Now, we know the Illuminati deals a lot in ritualistic murder. Uh, sometimes they make things appear to be suicides and things like that. Um, especially of celebrities. Uh, what does that really mean? What's the purpose of that? Well, in, in his particular instance, and, and, and one of the reasons why I feel like I have something to contribute in the discussion is that I know somebody who was uh, very close to Robin Williams that was around him. And also I worked... Um, as I've said previously, with victims of trauma-based mind control, that's program multiples. So I have some things to contribute in, in terms of Robin Williams. Uh, the uh, At a certain point, for various reasons, the controllers, if they decide that they no longer want a particular programmed person, and somebody like Robin Williams, then they can do what they call their terminology is throw them from the freedom train. Mm. And uh, these people have suicide programs and a typical suicide program is to slit your wrist. Now, the reports that have come out is that he had slit both of his wrists, which would be standard suicide programming for trauma-based mind control. What's really bizarre is that's kind of covered up by the other report that he took this belt and somehow impossibly hung himself, asphyxiated himself from the door, and doorknob and door, which, you know, if you diagram it out, it, it doesn't even make sense that someone could do that. So it's almost like the possibility exists that that for some reason his programming triggered a suicide program and um, he went through it. Uh, typically, men who are programmed um, follow through on the suicide programming. The majority of women that are programmed will act out, but they won't actually do it. They're, they're, that's why um, even though fewer men try suicide, more men actually uh, succeed um, than women. Um, so that's that's what I can uh, share. A lot of people have asked me for my input, so uh, I appreciate you asking because um, that uh, might, you know, give some people that are, are interested in the whole phenomenon. So Fritz, what do you think about the coincidence the BBC aired an episode of The Family Guy that showed Robin Williams um, talking about a failed suicide attempt? In the past, we've seen a lot of this, what, what uh, truthers are calling predictive programming. We've, we've seen a lot of things, you know, uh, Alex Jones has shown the, all, uh, a lot of the things that were shown for 10 years prior to 9-11, you know, in a cartoon showing planes 
uh, flying into the World Trade Centers and stuff like this. So yeah, this is definitely one of their little bags of tricks that they use is to show something just prior to it happening. So, um, you know, we can't state, state for certainty that, that it's definitely connected, but uh, on the basis of, of the way they've done things in the past, that would be very standard operating procedure. Mm. Well, we've definitely seen that a lot in the media, this things that are just too coincidental. Um, well, what do you think about the fact that Ferguson, uh, a lot of what they're saying is that it's due to the economic disparity there, that this is really kind of a ramping up of ongoing. It's not just the abuse at the hands of the police that the citizens there are feeling, but there's so much economic disparity. Uh, is that also part of the plan? And what do you see for the world economy? Yeah, we definitely are seeing a lot of uh, disparity. You know, in the last few years, um, like in 1980, the Fortune 200 CEOs had a ratio of 42 to 1 in income with the average worker. And now it's over 500 to 1. So there's this enormous uh, trend of the rich and the powerful getting richer and more powerful and the common person barely being able to make it and just getting poor. And, and the blacks, as being one of the groups that have been um, really uh, put, uh, they've, they've had a difficult time, um, you know, and, and the, there's been, um, they, they started advocating for their civil rights in the 60s, but, you know, it, it, they've had their, their share of difficulties. And so they're sensitive to these kind of things. And so it, it is definitely an, uh, a, something that will trigger a lot of resentment. Um, they're not the only ones that are suffering, but they're definitely one group that is um, very sensitive to the, 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 um, ha how the country's economy is falling apart. And why is it falling apart? It's planned that way. It's planned from several different directions. One is, is the way the world sets up their economic system. It's designed to collapse. I mean, we've got fra fractional banking. We've got the, the U.S. government having to go to the Fed to borrow every dollar that it uses and get in debt for every dollar that it uses. Um, we've got a lot of, uh, you know, we've got built-in inflationary uh, mechanisms. And then, of course, on top of that, the agenda of the elite, the Illuminati's agenda is for an economic collapse. So not only do we have natural built-in mechanisms for it happen, but they want it to happen. Um, mm -hmm. and, and so you see the Fed talking about capital controls. That's, that's a warning sign, a red flag, that we've got something really serious on the uh, on, on the horizon here and indeed we have i've been warning people that these next few months are going to be a time of significant danger you know i don't want to put any date on anything but americans need to realize that united states has gotten rid of their gold i mean they said that uh, their ft 900 report was saying that we, our government exported 217 tons of gold last year. Where that came from, nobody knows. The, the figures that they're giving us are totally fictitious. Mm -hmm. That The U.S. doesn't have gold. When the Germans wanted their gold that we were supposed to be safekeeping for them, we couldn't give it to them. And the little bit that we did send was not their gold. Was not, none of it was, uh, was gold that they had deposited with us. It was something else that was not even of the same purity. Um, so I don't know if that's gonna catch up with our government, that, that our government's been lying, uh, uh, you know, because our dollars depend on the full faith and credit of the US government, which, you know, uh, I don't know why anyone would have faith in, in this government. Um, one of the things that Obama shamelessly did 
was he contributed to the economic power leaving the United States. And, and that was the Europeans proposed this G20 uh, um, meetings, which, you know, the United States still has, uh, relative to the rest of the world, quite a bit of economic um, power, so to speak. But when you go to these G20 meetings, the Europeans get five votes, we get one vote, mm -hmm. and then the advisor, the head of the G20 meetings, is the IMF head. Well, the Europeans decide who's head of the IMF, which is Christine Lagarde from France, who she's an Illuminati member, by the way. And these controllers in, in these European Illuminati who are, are manipulating things, you know, they they get to decide who's head of the IMF. And so that's just one example. There's other examples, you know, the International Organization of Securities Commissions, they determine, they regulate our markets, not only the world's markets, but the U.S. markets. BIS in, in Basel, Basel, Switzerland, they govern banking regulators. So Americans think that we're sovereign, but all of these economic controls are with the, the Europeans. They're outside of the United States. And um, you might see here, I have a chart showing uh, that red diagram there is showing that uh, these, this is Belgium's, uh, how much Belgium just last year bought in US Treasury notes. That's 412 billion. Well, Belgium, What's Belgium got? Well, it's got these Illuminati kingpins that are working through front companies in Belgium. That's showing that these European Illuminati kingpins are buying U.S. Treasury debt. And what? why would they do that? Because that gives them a say in U.S. policy. So they're, mm. they're in a situation where they can tell uh, Obama what to do, they can tell the Fed what to do because um, they've, they've got us. And um, meanwhile, Russia and China, the BRICS countries, are waging economic war against us. Mm -hmm. um, a, lot of, a lot of people can recognize a shooting war, you know, if one country invades another, but there isn't a lot of information or awareness how countries can attack you economically. And China and Russia have been doing that. And they're working on dethroning the United States as the world's reserve currency. They're halfway towards that. And so one of the things that I've been warning uh, Americans about is, is one of the big signs that things are going to totally go south, collapse on, on America, is when America gets dethroned as the world's reserve currency. It may end up not just one currency replacing us, but several. But at any rate, uh, these countries are working as, as hard as they can to do that. And that means that the United States will no longer be able to shamelessly inflate their currency and just print up every, every month billions of dollars. But we're going, because if we do that, if we continue to do that like we're doing right now, we're going to get into inflation or hyperinflation. So we're going to be accountable for our wild economic policies. Which so far in the world, the, when we inflate our currency, it's like a, a tax on the whole world because there's more U.S. dollars outside of the United States than there are in the United States. So when we inflate our currency, the rest of the world uh, has to pay the price for our wild fiscal um, spending. Um, Putin said that the Eurasian model, this is the model that they're trying to replace uh, the, the previous way the world worked. He said it's going to be more successful model for the new world. So they've got a an entire economic system that they have negotiated and they're working to bring in and so we are in an economic war. Um, we've got so many things working against us. <laughs> the mm -hmm. BRIC countries, the Illuminati. It's like, and, and then our own uh, um, uh, bad 
fiscal policies, you know, of, of just overspending. Right. What does it mean when the, uh, the government is basically bankrupting all of its citizens while simultaneously collapsing the border? What is the purpose of that? Yeah, they're, you know, they're destroying our culture and they're making it hard for us to, to work together. It's a divide and conquer thing. Mm -hmm. You know, this, that's, that's part of what Ferguson's about. That's part of bringing in all of these, these foreigners through Mexico is we've got, we've got people that are not committed to this country. We've got all of this tension. Um, I spent a lot of time uh, visiting with Mexicans and not, not, I'm not talking about Mexican Americans. I'm talking about Mexicans that have come over from Mexico, what their attitudes are, why they've come. And, um, you know, uh, one representative of, of the group, I could say, this one Mexican told me, he said, you know, I came to America to make money and I'm going to make it whether I have to, to have a job or steal it, but one way or the other, I'm going to go back to Mexico with money. Hmm. Um, you know, there is no concept there of constitutional values or what America means to us. It's just a, a means to an end. Um, you know, if he has to steal a car and and take it back to Mexico and sell it or whatever, you know, and uh, and he wasn't the only one that's spoken to me like that. Um, and so we're, we're, we're seeing this divide and conquer, the, the breakdown of our culture, the, the breakdown of, of the structures in the United States that would allow us to deal with problems. Well, what are some triggers that we should be paying attention to? Um, just for instance, I was just watching on CNN and uh, they were talking about how there were provocateurs or there's rumors of provocateurs uh, coming into F Ferguson and it's almost like um, with the uh, Family Guy episode where they sort of put it out there what's going on but they present it in a way that they're they're just trying to get to the bottom of it when they're the ones that are sending in the provocateurs but you know but are there some other triggers or things that we should really be watching for to just help us you know not fall victim to the psyop one of the things that was significant was your one reporter there, when he got in there, he noticed that the police were allowing people to loot and destroy arson. They, they were not stopping the real criminals. And in the past, we've repeatedly seen this kind of behavior where the police repeatedly bent over backwards to help the criminal elements in the protest and then all of a sudden you get this huge overreaction where uh, they surround the peaceful protesters and then they move in and you'll have women with children that will be beaten down. Uh, once they beat people down, they'll grab them by the hair, they'll take pepper spray and spray each eye at close quarters. So, you know, and some of these people are almost killed by the by the brutal tactics. In fact, actually, in some of these protests, there are people that are killed. Um, and so then you just get this huge overreaction. Well, what's that do? It solidifies hate in the people that have been brutalized. So you create this, this civil war type scenario or, or mentality. Mm -hmm. And so instead of trying to resolve the problem, they're extirbating it. That's a big clue. That's a big clue that this is a PSYOP operation that they want to happen because instead of uh, dealing with it, I, I know that they're giving a lot of verbiage, you know, they're talking real sweet, you know, we want calmness and everything. But if, you know, actions speak louder than words, look at their actions. What are they actually doing? They're bringing in the National Guard. Mm -hmm. The National Guard should not be should not move in as police. There have been, historically, there have been numerous times where National Guard, you know, back in Ludlow, uh, Colorado, um, back in, in the early part of the 20th century, uh, they brought in the National Guard uh, on trains with machine guns, and there was a minor strike because they were upset at how the mining company 
was cheating them how did their pay the store was cheating them and everything they had gone on strike they actually machine gunned down women and children and strikers that that's the national guard has has a uh, you know kent state's another example of of where you bring in the national guard as police and you can expect that there's going to be um, an excessive use of a force because these men have not been trained to be police. Mm -hmm. You know, it, it, this happens typically worldwide. And so when you see them doing these kind of things, even though their mouths are saying one thing, their actions speak louder than their words. Right. And well, this whole situation in Ferguson has brought to the collective consciousness of America that, wow, we are living in a police state. So it almost seems like the mainstream media kind of rolled in there to help control this narrative where people were really beginning to, to say, well, wait a minute, why are we arming our local police stations with military grade weapons? And now we kind of see the media really showing all the looting and the rioting and showing all the danger to sort of justify the need for all of this heavy equipment in our local police departments. Now they're kind of calling for a CNN anchor today said, well, why not use water cannons and, you know, just kind of making this okay somehow, the new norm. Yeah, exactly. And they've been, there's been a campaign going on for a couple decades to normalize the militarization of our police. And uh, it, it's pretty amazing. You know, we had a, um, bank robbery here oh it was uh it was in uh 97 and um it occurred across the river in vancouver washington and they they moved through an an entire area of vancouver washington with militarized police that were they were dressed just like uh Nazi stormtrooper wannabes, you know, mm -hmm. with the the black helmets and and the black uniforms, and they went through an entire section of town and just terrorized the people. They marched up to people's houses and just just opened doors, slammed doors open, you know, just like you were, like it was World War II and the Nazi army was moving into uh, some Russian village or something terrorize the whole people, getting people used to this kind of brutality. And then the, the Oregonian, our local um, paper here in Portland, Oregon, had a big front page picture of four officers. And I, I, I tell you, you, you would have a hard time telling them apart from uh, SS troops. I mean, their helmets just looked like German helmets. They were all in black. They had weapons, and, and they're walking, four of them abreast, and that was on the front page. And the only reason that a, a, a paper, and our paper is controlled by, by people back east, um, the only reason that they would be doing that is to acclimate people to this police state. You know, this is, right. this is what... what you know, and the younger people don't know any different. I talk to younger people and I tell them, this isn't the way it was when I grew up. Mm -hmm. This is not the way the police acted. And they look at me like, what? Right. Yeah, people find it unbelievable when I say that I grew up in a little town and the, the police officers used to give me a ride home if it was raining. Like, they were just really nice. They were there to protect and serve. Well, one last question for you. Is there any way to beat this thing? What can we do? I mean, clearly the Illuminati and all these plans have been going on for generations. Is there anything that we can do? Well, there are a lot of things that we can do. And um, I spend a lot of time giving people suggestions uh, uh, and uh, ideas. You know, I write articles every day on Facebook, which anybody is welcome to read. Um, the, the underlying thing is, is there's a, um, a scripture in the Bible that says faith overcomes the world. By extension, faith overcomes the new world order. So the, the beginning thing that we need is, is we need to have faith that there's a good God and that he has our best interest at heart. And, and then the next thing that we need to do is, 
is we need to realize that good people are going to stand up for what's right. And, you know, we do a lot of things in life, and we don't know what the end result's going to be. We start a trip, but we don't know if we're going to succeed in getting to where we're going. The same way with this. We're on a trip. we got to do what's right, and we, we, we'll we just have to act, step forward in faith and let the chips fall where they fall. Um, a good person can't just sit there and allow uh, these crimes against humanity, crimes against the American people, to continue. We we need to do we need to do what we can, and you know we're not God. We can't predict how successful this will be, but um, that's the basis. Uh, that's the foundation of all these other suggestions that I come out with. That you know, and like I say, there's. Uh, some of the protests over the years have have actually succeeded. Uh, you know, Sicardo, uh, uh, the head of Indonesia, you know, um, brought down um, East Timor, has got their independence. A lot of things over time have changed. People, the common person, have been been able to to bring change in this world. Um, it doesn't come easy. But uh, at least one has, uh, um, one can look oneself in the mirror in the evening and, and feel like, okay, I've done my part, you know, um, I, can, I, can, I can look God eye to eye and say, you know, um, uh, I did what I could for my family and for my country, and, and we'll just have to... Um, uh, let the chips fall where they fall, as God um, is is our. He, he's the one who ultimately is going to be our success. Mm -hmm. Very well said, and that's you know that that's what this is all about is just having faith and knowing that uh, it really is a battle for your soul, and just knowing that you fought the good fight and did what you can as a you know being a good human to help out your fellow man and you know, fight for what we have while we're here. Um, well, Fritz, thank you so much for joining us today. And I think we're gonna try and have you on the Alex Jones Show uh, sometime next week. So hopefully you'll have an hour and get really in depth with all of this. Um, but thank you for your time today. Thank you so much, Leanne. Well, you can pick up your copy of Bloodlines of the Illuminati by Fritz Springmeier. We sell it exclusively at the InfoWars store. And we brought you this extended interview with Fritz tonight because our listeners and our readers are really into the information that he provides. And you can get more extended interviews just like this one with Fritz Springmeier. We've also got instant access to The Alex Jones Show and all of our special reports and more at Prison Planet TV. You can become a member and share your username and password with up to 11 people at the same time. That is instant access to all the information you need to fight the info war. Um, and you can share it with your friends. And of course, your support helps us to run this operation and give you this extended coverage uh, that you enjoy. Thank you so much for tuning into the show tonight. And we'll see you here tomorrow, 7 p.m. Central. Celebrate the spirit of freedom and liberty upon which our nation was founded at InfoWarsShop.com. Molon Lave is ancient Greek for come and take it. This popular design combines both classic Greek Spartan imagery with modern M16 assault rifles. Now available in women's tees and proudly made in the USA. And now you can protect yourself from corrupt cops with the InfoWars dash cam. It's your car's black box that records all that the driver sees and hears. And introducing the Block It Pocket. It renders your phone undetectable while protecting your private data and your health. Or take back your privacy and protect your personal information by getting your very own detractor cell phone pouch. So get incredibly high quality freedom-based products and help fund the revolution at InfoWarsShop.com. 
You are watching the InfoWars Nightly News, which airs 7 p.m. Central at InfoWarsNews.com. Members can share their passcodes with up to 11 other people, and your support is helping us defend liberty worldwide.